So, I've been sitting here for like an hour trying to get my camera to work because I did say I would consider maybe making a video on how to open up and uh, clean a PS4 controller. It's been an hour. It was working at first. Everything is f was fine, but for some reason it just stopped out of nowhere, and it wouldn't work. I mean, everything is, is working fine with the, um, the camera itself, but I have the camera connected to my computer, and for some reason the feed from the um, camera going to the computer it's not showing up on the computer so that I can record it. Yeah. It's like fate is against me right now so that I can't make this video using this camera. Not, not this camera. I have another camera I set up here on a stand. Um, here is the stand. And I was going to use it as a uh, um, a top-down camera looking down at the controller as I was opening it up but for some reason it's not working I mean it's everything is working individually the the camera anyway but the computer I don't know why it's not registering the uh, the feed that's coming into it it's not it's not showing it for some reason so it's like fate is against me so we've got to improvise and I was looking around and I saw that I had another camera here on my desktop and this is a webcam yeah if I had used the other camera, which would have been this one, well, different camera, this one is, is better, the big one, but for some reason it just doesn't want to work with me. Like I said, I've been playing around with things for an hour, maybe even more than that, trying to get it to work, and it just hasn't wanted to work for some reason. So. I've pretty much given up on getting that to work for now because I spent a lot of time trying to get it to work and nothing's working. Yeah. So, I guess what I'm going to do instead is this camera, which I had this sitting right here in front of me on my desktop. I believe I bought this a long time ago and I just, I never used it. I'm not sure which, uh, Logitech this is. It doesn't say it anywhere on the camera itself, but I'm guessing it it must be a C9, um, what is it, C920 or something newer than the C920, because I believe I'm using the C920 to record this video. So, this has to be something better, possibly. Possibly. I think it is. I mean, it still has the plastic on it, as you can see, and I've never used it. I'm not exactly sure what kind of a camera this is, but I think I'll, I'll plug this one in, and this is what I'll use to face the controller um, as I'm opening it up. So... Actually, should I explain? Is, th is there anyone here that is maybe not up to date? Yeah, I did just kind of start this video abruptly. Um, so since I did start it abruptly, hi, I'm Wolf. <laughs> if anyone is still here that is unfamiliar with what's going on. Um, basically, what happened is I had a PS4 controller and... I hadn't used it for a while, 
and then one day I decided to pick it up because I wanted to use it to possibly record a Let's Play. And so I took the controller, I connected it to my computer, and when I plugged it in to my computer, I noticed the circle button was not working. So I could not go backwards. Circle is normally the back button on the console itself in the menus. Yeah, so I couldn't use the circle button. So I found myself in a bit of a predicament here because I wanted to make this video. I wanted, well, not this one specific. I wanted to make a video and my controller wasn't working. Now a new controller is kind of expensive, especially a new PS4 controller. I mean, who buys a PS4 controller in 2020? Are people still, b I don't know if they are. I have no idea. All I know is that I hadn't used my controller in a while. The PS4 is still the most recent console that I do have though, but I hadn't used the controller or the console itself all that much in, we'll just say a while. So spending $60 on a new controller when I'm hardly going to use it. I mean, I plan on using it for the video. Yeah, I'm kind of rambling, aren't I? Yeah. yeah, well, you get the idea. Buying a new controller, it's expensive. So, I decided after a while, uh, a few days passed, and I came up with the idea of fixing the controller, attempting to fix it. And, well, it wasn't fully me. I looked around and someone suggested it somewhere. I was just going through random things online. I saw on a forum and someone suggested it to someone else. And I thought to myself, you know what? I'm like, hey, it couldn't hurt to try fixing the controller. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? I break it? <laughs> I mean, we've, we've already crossed that bridge, I, I guess you could say. It could stop working. I mean, it, already kind of not where the circle button is. It's kind of vital that you have a working circle button on a controller. So the controller may as well be broken. May as well. Even though it's just the circle button at this point in time. So I decide to attempt fixing the controller. And well, before I continue, I'd like to say every so often I would wipe down my controller and I'd say I'd do an okay-ish, okay-ish job of cleaning the controller, wiping it down, you know, just your basic uh, kind of thing. Now, when I opened the controller, well, let's just say on the inside, along the lining of the, the shell, on the inside of it, there were skin cells, dirt. It was just hardened on there, like a, a lining all the way around. And I was, I was quite surprised by that. The amount that was, was there, there was a lot. And there was just hardened uh, skin cells all the way around the entire controller. And I found that really surprising. Anyway, um, I wiped it up a little bit. I didn't clean it too much uh, because I thought to myself, I was like, possible idea for a video that content brain at work there. <laughs> yeah, so I cleaned up what I needed to clean up. And I tried fixing the controller. I proceeded with attempting to fix it. And, well, attempting to fix it, if you're wondering how that went, how that turned out, it went just about as well as you'd expect something like that to go for someone that has never attempted to fix a PlayStation 4 controller before in their life. 
actually the controller was less functional after I was done with it. So, I mean, breaking it more, it was already broken. There is no word for something being more broken. <laughs> so, yeah, the broken controller, let's just say it was still broken. Actually, it didn't work at all now. Yeah, so that's how that went. Anyway, um, as for th this video, what we're doing here today, we're g I'm going to show you how to open a PS4 controller and clean the lining of it so that you can clean the lining of it, if that's something you'd like to do. Now, I wouldn't really suggest opening a PS4 controller and doing this, but maybe it's something you might want to do because you're now aware of just how much dirt there is in the controller, especially after years of using it. Because for me, I had been using mine for, I had it for, let's just say over 10 years. Yeah. Now, maybe if I had been cleaning it a bit more frequently throughout the years, there wouldn't have been that dirt to begin with. So that is something you could do. If you have a new controller, maybe clean it a little regularly and then there won't be dirt accumulating on the inside. But if you want to know how to check, well, this video can kind of help you with that. You can take a look. Also, when you're doing this, when you're opening your controller, if you do end up doing it, which I don't suggest, be very careful with things. I'm going to be a little less careful because, again, my controller, it's already broken. So, or maybe I will still be careful. I, I'll still be careful. Yeah, I'm not trying to break it more. I mean, I'm going to try selling this thing. We'll see what ends up happening when I do the controller, by the way. What ends up happening when I do sell it. I mean, it's, it's nothing major. What's wrong with it? I'm sure it's probably easy to fix uh, for someone that has the available uh, parts to fix it. And they know what they're doing. I'm sure it's easy for them to fix it, but for someone like me who first time opening a PS4 controller and I mean getting the parts you know, buying a new controller they don't really just sell PlayStation 4 controller parts like that and well the only way to get the parts you'd need you'd have to buy probably a broken controller and then it's pretty much a gamble as to whether that controller has the parts you need and well I think there might be some soldering that needs to be done too with um, how uh, the controller was after I used it so yeah anyway what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set up this camera that I have here and then I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to open a PS4 controller. Open and clean a PS4 controller. So, this camera does still have the plastic on it, as you can see. I bought this years ago and I never used it. You can see it even still has the uh, twisty tie still on it there. So, yeah, let's go ahead and take off this plastic. How long ago did I buy this? If I had to guess, I would say I bought this. We are currently, mm, I would say about six or maybe seven years ago. I believe I bought this off Amazon, so the date is actually in my history. Maybe I'll pull that up. And I'll put a screenshot of it on the screen. I, yeah, because I did buy it off of Amazon.
I'm surprised that the tape on it still has some stickiness to it. Especially after it's been sitting there for so long. It's been sitting there for a, for a while now. A good while. Because if we're in 2024, well, like I said, I said six or seven years, right? Or did I say the actual year I think I purchased it in? It's it's been a while, yeah, and it has not been used. Imagine if it doesn't work. Do you think Logitech will honor that? <laughs> keep the return policy. I think those things only last like a year or two. Even though I haven't used it since I bought it, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up and. We'll see whether it works or not, and if it works, well, well, we'll continue with the video and me showing you how to open and clean a PS4 controller. Okay, perfect. Looks like we've got it set up here perfectly, and it's working really well. Actually, this camera, I think, is better than the current one that I'm using. Yeah, once I attached it to the computer, I found out that this is the C922, so this camera is better than the one that I'm recording with because, well, it was a more recent one. And you can actually kind of tell a little bit by the image quality, at least I, I think you, you can tell by how it looks. By the way, if you want to see how I set this camera up, let me go ahead and just swap back to the other one. And as you can see, I now have this cord in front. <laughs> I have this cord in front of me because this was the only way I could set this up. I have too many things in my my computer and this is the only free slot that I have here where the cord is now running right in front of me like this on top of my mic. This is going to the camera. Yeah, I have a um, not too many slots in my PC and they're all being used up at present. Yeah, this computer doesn't have too many slots. So we'll go back to the other angle. And there we are. Okay, so I have my wipe here for when we open the controller. I will go through all the tools that I have here. This wire management, cable management on my desk, huh? Oh, wait, actually one cable I could get rid of is this one. Because this was for the other camera. There's an entire capture device uh, that's used for that camera, so... That's uh, sitting right there, actually. Let's not do that right now, though. Hopefully all these wires isn't going to drive anyone crazy. Yes, my my cable management. I mean, one of them is going to be gone. One of them specifically here for the, the camera that I had set up before this one. It was in place of this one. Actually, there are a few cables here for that. There are two cables and the capture device, which is right there at the, the head of that battery you see laying down there. You know, so let's go ahead and get to it with this controller, shall we? As you can see here, if you saw my uh, uh, my video I did a while ago where I showed you my setup, well, you can kind of see that my setup has it's changed just a little bit since the last time. I'm at a desk here, a white desk, and while well, the computer has changed, that's this here. And yeah, there there have been some some changes. Um, oh, also the capture device. It's not this one here, the one for the camera. There's another one at the head of the battery. Uh, another. There are two capture. This is one, and that's another one. Yeah. So our tools for opening the PlayStation 4 controller is one of these. I had this um, laying around. I bought this a long time ago for something else. Um, I'll have a link in the description if anyone maybe wants to pick this up. 
But what this is basically, it's like a pen, um, and there are little bits that you can take out and uh, change around. See, this is, is one, and in the cap here, you open it up like that, and you have a bunch of them inside of there. There are, I think, like six or so in total. So you need a, you don't need one of these uh, specifically. What you need is you need um, for the controller, you're going to need a really small Phillips head, uh, the one that's like a star. And you may also need a prying tool. And the prying tool, well, I don't have a prying tool, but the reason why I have this head on here, which you can see, it's it's flat. If the camera will focus, I'm not sure if it'll focus. Probably need a, a background for it to, to focus or something. Yeah, so this one, um, I'm using it as a prying tool. It's basically a flat point. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the Phillips uh, screwdriver that you have, the small one. It needs to be a really small one because the screws are extremely tiny on the uh, controller here. I don't know the exact size, but the small one for this thing, it worked for me. So you're going to take it and then there are four screws that you need to remove. One, there's one here, two at the base, one on each side, and then there are two by the uh, trigger buttons, one on each side. So you're going to take your Phillips screwdriver and you're going to put it in and you're going to remove each of those screws. Now. Once you've removed all four, I'm trying to recall if there were any more. I don't believe there were. See, I, I didn't put them back in. That's why I'm not doing this right now. I never put them back into the slots here. So this has, um, these have already been removed from my controller. So now what I did next is I took, take your prying tool and And should I have zoomed in because there's so much going on? It's n not, uh, we're not focused on everything is quite distracting. Hmm. Actually, before I zoom in, let's uh, talk about some of the stuff here. See, this is a, a dental pick. <laughs> I um, don't use it for my teeth. You might think he uses it for his teeth and he puts it, no, no. This one here specifically, because... I don't know, that'd be kind of, yeah, I don't know if I'd put it there. This one specifically, I use the end if I ever have like a, a knot in my hair that I can't get out. I'll use the, the end to uh, try to untangle it. Yeah, I don't use this for my teeth, this one here anyway. The, uh, the one I use for my teeth is somewhere else. And also, you can see we have some Duracell batteries there. In my opinion, Duracell works pretty well. Not sponsored by them, by the way. That's not some kind of product placement there for Duracell. Have some batteries there. Yeah, I use Duracell batteries. I bought them, uh, uh, they were on sale a while back, and I bought a bunch of them, like eight of them, and they're, they're still going um, pretty strong, I'd say. They lose quite a bit of charge between each charge, but it still works. Um, right now I have Duracell in the mouse as well. Yeah, these these don't last too long anymore. I'm probably reaching the end of their lifespan. I get maybe, if when I charge that next time and I put it into this mouse, I'll get maybe at most a, a week of usage, I think. Yeah, probably something like that. And um, is there anything else here? Oh, we also have this. This is from when I opened my PS4 controller previously. Yeah, that's 
still here. I put it in the corner and actually I used it, I believe yesterday I saw a bug, I believe it was a mosquito, and I squished the bug with it. <laughs> you can actually see it right there in the middle. Yeah. So we're just going to put that back there. And uh, it's kind of funny that I did that last night. The, uh, the mosquito thing. <laughs> anyway. Um, is anyone watching and thinking, that's kind of gross, man. Hey. That's why it's face up. It's not touching anything. The part that I, I squished the, um, the bug with. It's not touching anything. See, it's face up. Okay, so back to the controller. What we're going to do is we're going to take our prying tool and we're going to put it into the controller right here. This is not not inside of the slot because there is a slot right there you don't want to put it inside of that you're going to put it along the the lining right beneath it and we're going to put it in like this and we're going to pry remember this is a prying tool now you may need to do that along the entire lining of the controller don't put too much force or pressure because you need to get it to disconnect from uh, inside. So in order to do that, just put it in and gently pry a little. And again, you just go along the lining of the controller and you'll see it opening up as you do this. It should get... Um, easier and easier to open up. It should loosen up more and more. Oh, by the way, that's a close-up of the controller. It's it's cleanish. <laughs> I mean, there could use some work, but for the most part, it's clean. I wiped it down. I think that's a is that a scratch. Yeah, it's it's. I wiped it down before we started the video. So. You're going to go ahead and pry. Let's see if it can open up without any prying right now. It doesn't look like it can, so we're going to take our tool, put it back in there, right beneath the slot, not inside of it, and we're going to just apply a little bit of pressure, and as you do that, you'll notice that it's slowly popping up, and you can already see there's uh, some dirt there along the lining. Like I said, from the outside, none of this is is visible. Well, I didn't say that. I Im implied it, heavily implied, and then I did kind of say it. Okay, so we're going to put it back in. We're going to gently pry some more. And I'm going to see if I can open it now. I can open this side, I think. See, it's opening up there, and you can see the dirt along the lining. Now, what about the other side? Let's see here. Okay, there we go. And the other side now, too. And you can see the dirt. Okay. So, you want the controller to be downward. So, we're going to put it down like that, and we're going to gently pull... And as we pull, it'll come out more and more. Gently pull. Remember, be very gentle. And what we're going to have to do is you're going to have to maneuver around the trigger buttons. So to do that, we're going to push forward just a little bit because you want it to get off the trigger buttons. So I'm pushing that way. That way is forward. Just wiggling it little by little. And it's coming out slowly. And be very careful from here because there's going to be a cable attached to the back of the controller from this board. So 
you don't want to separate it more than this because there is a cable there that you will need to detach so you can just go ahead and pull it apart slowly and this is the cable here right here this little thing will be in a slot on the controller over here so we're just going to pull it apart now you don't need to do anything about that cable um, you could just leave it attached like this but be careful with that cable um, if you want to take it out you can but be very careful when doing that and well since mine is currently not connected well I can go ahead and show you the inside of the controller so the the lining as you can see you can see that that there are skin cells there along the inside of course it has been cleaned a little so it's not as bad as it was before but well you can see it for yourself now what it was that I was talking about because there's all that right there and that is all skin cells that has hardened uh, we could say dirt clay <laughs> man is made from clay right? I should have made jokes like that especially with the type of comments I get on this channel sometimes <laughs> uh, so you can see the lining of it it's all throughout there and again this isn't as bad as it was when I originally opened it because again I did clean off a bit of it so nowhere near as bad as it was before so what we're going to do now is we are going to put down our our tool in my case uh, my screwdriver and I am going to take a wipe and I am just going to wipe along the inside here getting all that dirt out now again for you you may not have disconnected this cable here it may still be connected into this slot right here. If it is, of course, be very careful not to pull too much because you can fray the wires on the cable if you pull too much. So be very gentle with it. You can just hold it like, like this or the other way around and you just have it there. And all you need to do is reach into the, the uh, edges of the lining and just wipe it a little just give it a little a little wipe there now you can see there is the skin cells there if it'll focus I could get a little in there because I don't have it connected so I'm free to get all the way in there but you don't really need to go too far in because the rest of the controller uh, there wasn't much of a problem with it it's just the lining where all that stuff has just kind of caked onto and hardened so we're just gonna get in there like that And I think we should be good here for the most part. It's it's good enough. We can also do our trigger buttons. Just take it and put it up in there. This one's getting kind of dirty. I'm going to go ahead and grab another one. So I'm going to take the new one. We're just going to put it in there. Now again, be gentle when you're doing this, especially if you still have the cable connected. Be very careful because you don't want to uh, damage the uh, little things on the edge of this, this cable here. You can fray them. 
I mean, they're not extremely, it's not extremely fragile, but just, I'm just saying this to be on the safe side. You don't want to end up having a non-functional controller and then needing to spend $60 to buy a new controller. Now, do you? No, you do not. Oh, some, some of it fell out there. Okay, so I think we've done a pretty good job here of cleaning, cleaning this up. It looks like it's as good as it's gonna get without uh, doing anything too crazy, like maybe getting a brush and then uh, brushing it. Yeah, but this is, this is good enough. You don't really see, or do you see, oh yeah, you do see a little bit in there. I see that on the, the camera. Remember, I'm at a slightly different angle than the camera, so I don't see it the way the camera is seeing it. I'm looking from this way. Whereas the camera's from the side. Okay, I think that's... That's good. Yeah, once we close the controller up, we're not going to be able to see any of this. It may as well not even exist once we close our controller up. Now, with this cable, there's a little blue thing there at the edge of it. Well, mine, it came off completely. <laughs> so if you do want to pull it out, yeah, there's a little slot. You would just pull it out of there. And the cable would be fine. Of course, when you're putting it back in, though, that's when you need to be careful. You need to be very careful if that's something you do end up doing, taking it out and then trying to put it back in. Because it's easy for the um, what's on the end to become frayed. And then if that happens, well, you'll probably probably need a new one of those for your controller if you want it to, uh, to work again. So I'm going to do this, this side as well. Even though this isn't the bottom, this is the top of the controller. Because you can see there is there are skin cells in here as well all along the, the lining. It's on the trigger buttons too. Yeah. And a lot of this you can, you'd never be able to see. Well, I could never see it when the controller is how it was. Never even knew this was all here. Now, I'm going to try taking this controller to GameStop. Oh, I'm going to try taking this controller to a store that we're not going to name. And we'll, we'll see if they give me anything, for, how much they give me for it. And hopefully that'll offset the cost of the other controller just a, a little bit. I mentioned the name of the company, so now if I make a joke saying I'll probably get about a dollar fifty for this. <laughs> oh boy. That's how GameStop was back in the day though, when it came to um, trade in value. You'd take a brand new game and be like, okay, so this game came out yesterday. How much can I get for it? Uh, best we can do is three twenty-five. <laughs> um, wait a week later, and the best they could do was one seventy. <laughs> oh. I mean, you guys know I'm exaggerating a little bit, right? I'm. I'm joking. It, it was like that almost, though. The prices that... No, what they'd give you for it. It was just 
So, let's just say, yeah, we can use the word ridiculous. <laughs> and if you have a prying tool, this is also something you could do. Maybe there's some stuff that is stuck in the, the corners or the edges that aren't coming off as you wipe. Just take your prying tool and get in there and just uh, chip away at it to, well, you want to loosen it up. And we'll just do that. See, we're getting that off. And got some over here. Some over there. Okay, so I think that's that's about it. Well, for the most part, it's not perfect, but it's been cleaned fairly well. Now, when you take this to the store to sell it, um, because it is broken, I've looked up how they they do things. Uh, what they would need to do is they do have to send it out for repairs. So whatever they give you for it will be lower than something that's functional. Um, there's a refurbish fee. So they're going to minus that from the controller because they have to send it out to be repaired and it'll also be cleaned as well. So you don't have to do a perfect job. Uh, you just want it to look well, I don't even know if it has to look um, too satisfactory because, again, the, the refurbish fee, I think uh, it's the same whether it's cleaned or, or not because the controller is is um, non-functional. It does need to be sent out, sent out to be fixed to the company that they use. So now we can go ahead and put our controller back together. And what you're going to do is first we're going to line up the trigger buttons like that. Kind of like uh, you have a sandwich and you're peeking inside to see what's going on with the sandwich. What's on the inside, you're just peeking inside. So line it up like that. And you see they're, they're kind of in there. And on the other side, what you're going to do is these two things here, this and this one, you're going to make sure they're in the controller because there's the uh, outside part here. So put those in and trying to keep this at an angle where you can see what it is. Oh, wait a minute. I did miss a little bit right there, didn't I? There we go. And I think on this side too. Covering a different point of view. <laughs> you see so much. It's like um, with views on things in life, huh? Sometimes a different perspective or point of view and you're like, whoa. Whoa, I've never thought about it like that before. Never seen it that way before. Okay, so I'm trying to get it in here. How did I do this? It was closed when we started, so I managed to get it together somehow. Ah, there we go. That's that's how you do it. So what you're going to need to do is, rather than the sandwich method, you want a slight peaking in your sandwich method. You want to 
do both kind of at the same time, not the the full on peak inside, but you know, you want to kind of do both at the same time and you shimmy it just a little bit. And you can see it's lined up perfectly there now. It's not closed yet, it's still open. And we're going to go ahead and press it down along the edges. And you should hear some clicks. And now our controller is put back together. So now I'm going to wipe it down one last time because all that dirt and then I have to clean up the workspace here too. Let me grab one more wipe. Okay, so here we are now. I'm back. I have the screws for the controller there and I grabbed two wipes. So we're going to wipe down our controller now one last time on the outside because of all that debris there that we were uh, wiping up, moving around, getting off the controller. This is a pretty clean controller now. It was clean before, but now it's been uh, thoroughly cleaned, we could say. Okay, so there's our controller. I'll just put it off to the side now so that it can dry off a little bit. Put it right there for now. And our workspace. I'll just go ahead and clean that off. The tip. Get the dirt off of that. And then wipe here down. Okay, and lastly, we have our screws here, so I'll put them there. These screws were quite rusted when I took them out. I wiped them down a bit, so you don't see it too much. Some of them, they actually had the, the head blocked because uh, there was like dirt inside of it. You can see here that it is a I don't know if that'll focus but it is a Phillips head I don't know how to get this to uh, there we go focus there there we go so we're just gonna wipe that off and now we're going to take our controller and grab the Phillips head. I feel like there's a head missing. One, two, three, four, five. I think there were six. Maybe it's. Maybe it's by where I left. I had the screws um, sitting. I think it's probably there. Let's see if this one can fit. Um, it looks like it can fit. 
Yeah, this one can fit. Also, it's magnetic, so that's, that's really nice that it's magnetic. Whenever you take something out, you don't have to worry about it falling because these little bits, they're magnetic. So, let's go ahead and put these other ones away. I would rather use the smaller one because I think they would fit into that one better than than this one. I think we'll stick with this. We'll stick with this one for now. So we'll just put it in there and grab our controller. The plastic from our camera. <laughs> Controller upside down. Controller is fully closed now. So we are going to just turn it over. Take our screws. And that's the nice thing about it being magnetic. And now, I'm just making sure these are all the same length. Yeah, they are. You don't have to put too much pressure. Just put them in clockwise. The ones that are slightly rusted, I believe were the ones at the bottom of the controller. I'm not sure why the ones at the bottom were more rusted than the ones at the top. You can see it's still a little rusted there, that one. It doesn't matter which one you put in where, because they're all the same size. So we'll just go ahead and Wait a minute, are they all the same size? This one, I think they're all the same size. These two should be the same size. They're not the same size. I thought they were. Okay. So, they're close to being the same size. Two of them are slightly longer, shorter than the other two. So I'm guessing the, the ones that are slightly longer go in at the top because down here, this one is sticking up a little bit. So the shorter one needs to go in here. They're so close to being the same size that, at first glance, you can't really tell that they're, they're different lengths. That's how close they are in size. Yeah, and as you can see, it fits in perfectly. And this is our shorter one, I believe. Can you see that it's only shorter by a, a tiny bit? There we go. Yeah, it's only shorter by a, 
very small amount. I'm trying to... so that you can see. Wait, which one is the shorter one? The one on the left. It's hard for me to see the, the head because I have things in the way of the lighting. You can see it on video, but from my perspective that I'm at, yeah, I can't quite see uh, certain things too well. Also, my hands are kind of in the way for me, from my, my point of view, blocking the light. So yeah, there we go. That one's perfect. And you don't have to put it in all the way. You just want to turn until there is a, a little bit of pressure. I didn't show you taking out the screws. So to make up for that, I'm showing you putting them back in. Okay, so Okay, so there we go. That is how you can open and clean a PS4 controller. Now I know the controller probably doesn't look clean because yeah, that's that's the liquid from the <laughs> the wipes that I used. So there you go. Our controller is just like new. Yeah, you may see some marks in it on the camera. That's from the the liquid from the the wipes that I was using to uh, clean it down. I think it left a little bit of residue on the controller. I may need to wipe it off with a, a towel or something to uh, get it streak free. So yeah, there you go. Uh, before we end the video, let me also mention that I do have a join button and that is one of the best ways to support the channel. If that is something that you would like to do, you can find that somewhere in the channel. And I also have it in the description as well. There are a couple of links there if you would like to support in that way. And of course, supporting that way, it well, it lets me know that you do enjoy the content that I put out. It helps offset the cost of things as well, like the controller which I recently purchased. and kind of give me a bit more encouragement to make videos like this. So that's going to be it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you can leave a like. And if you're new around here, maybe consider us up to the channel as well. I'm Wolf, and until next time.